Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I was gonna go check out the the chicken fights or the cock fights, but I got some bad information. I went there and there was nobody there, so I don't know what happened. But the guys who gave me the information raise roosters to to fight in the cock fight, so I considered it was good information. But I got there and there was nobody there. And then another guy told me to go all the way to the airport, so I rode all the way to the airport and there's nobody there either. So I'm on my way home and. I rode by FZ Market in Chalan Kanoa. I was like, I'll bet they got my beer. This is my beer. Corona is what I get when I, they don't, when nobody has this. But the FZ Market has Dos Equis Amber, so this is my favorite beer. And FZ Market in Chalan Kanoa had it. So today's a good day, <laughs> even though I got bad information. I went to the wrong place and rode all the way to the airport and back. I still got my beer and I'm still in Chalan Kanoa on a really nice day so it's it's it turned out to be a good day anyway. This is Chalan Kanoa Beach. It's one of the nicest beaches in all of Saipan, without a doubt. It's my favorite beach. Pretty soon I'm probably gonna move down here because it's just it's just so cool. I love this place. I love this area. You see the if you look at the water, there's lots of places to swim. There's not too many weeds. Up by where I live, it's all weeds. This is all really beautiful sandy, sandy beach. Inside the water too, it's all sandy and nice.
Sorry for jerking this camera around, but this tripod is just not exactly what I expected it to be. Trying to give you guys a real world view of what it's like to sit here and drink beer, you know. That's what it's like. And you want to be in the trees, you want to be in the shade because it's so hot, man. It's not, this is not as hot as summer. Summer is really killer, but this is actually a beautiful time of the year. It's the most beautiful time of the year right now. So it's not really that hot, but I still like to be in the shade. The beach is gorgeous. It's it's great to swim in, but you don't want to sit out there in the sun and drink beer. It's just not. Right where I'm at is perfect. Yeah, so these guys told me to that the I was gonna go do the cockfights. <clears throat> I thought it would be a good idea. And these guys told these guys who raise chickens for the cockfights told me what time and where to where to go. And I went there and there was nobody there. And I'm not really sure if it's actually legal because. I looked up on the internet on, in 2019, uh, they banned it. And then this is one of those laws that Saipan decided they didn't want to follow that the U.S. imposed on Saipan. So like I said before, Saipan has the choice to be able to decide what laws they want to follow and what laws they don't. And this was one of those laws that they just said they're not going to follow this law. So Saipan has basically just kind of ignored the the federal, the U.S. federal law that says cockfighting is illegal. So you go on the internet and you can't find anything at all about it. You can't find nothing at all. It's like it's all underground. But I went out there to try to find it. These guys told me what time to be there and where to go and there was nobody there. So... That's why I'm here drinking beer, it's because these guys gave me bad information. Next time I'm going to have these guys take me there by themselves, so I'll be with one of those guys. So I'll be on the inside right from the get-go, man. <clears throat> and it's not that I'm into cockfighting or anything, it's just that I thought it would be really cool to film. As far as it, it's part of Saipan's culture, so, and it's something that Saipan as a whole has acknowledged that it's something that's part of their culture. It's not something to ignore, really. I mean, and if you're going to argue about the, the animal rights issues, is Kentucky Fried Chicken animal abuse, you know?
they're gonna kill the chickens anyway, so. I mean, I don't norm I wouldn't normally go to a chicken fight, but I just wanted to see it as part of, uh, you know, as, as part of what people do here. And it, uh, I know they do it because there's people all over the place who are raising roosters for these chicken fights. So I know it's happening. If it wasn't happening, they wouldn't be raising roosters for the chicken fights. So they're doing it. So. And the most curious thing that I found in researching this was that uh, you think that these guys are not, they don't care about the animals, but these guys are fucking in love with these chickens, man. They know everything. They know more about chickens than anybody else in the, in the planet. Uh, so from that perspective, I, I want to show that perspective when I do this. I'm going to do that video, but I... I'm going to show that perspective when I do this video because that's a perspective that I don't think a lot of people see when they judge this issue is that these guys, it's not like these guys are putting these chickens in the ring and they don't care about them. Fuck, they love these chickens, man. It's like their cats or their dogs, man. And they know everything about these chickens or these roosters. So that's a part of it that I didn't realize until I started researching this stuff, that how passionate these guys are about this stuff. They know, they know more about this stuff than anybody else on the planet. So to act like they don't care about the animals is, is ridiculous, in my opinion. Now, after I've researched the topic. But the, the fact is, they did give me bad information, and they weren't straight with me which kind of pissed me off because I rode all the way to the airport on my bike. <laughs> and if you guys know this island, you know how far the airport is. So I need this beer now. <laughs> uh. This is really a nice place. If you guys live here, you should come here. If you don't live here, you should come here. <laughs> and bring some Dos Equis Amber while you're at it. Because they're about out. I think I drank it all. So I'm just sitting here enjoying Chalan Kanoa. And I figured I might as well talk to you guys about some stuff. Some stuff that's been in my past videos, some comments that people have made. Uh, about moving here to Saipan. I have to re I have to really re-emphasize how how important it is that you guys have a way to support yourself because if you don't, this island doesn't have very many jobs. Uh, I got a job, but I'm like superhero. <laughs> if you're not a superhero, you're not gonna get a job, man. You gotta be bad. I mean, you gotta be like James Bond. If you ain't like that, then you ain't gonna get a job. And uh, if you think you're gonna, like if you're working at home in the U.S. and you think you're gonna come here and work at home, it's not gonna happen. I tried for four months to work at home, to get a work at home job. I tried LinkedIn, I tried Flex Jobs, I fl tried uh, Glassdoor, I tried all those sites and nothing. Zero, man. Zero. Not one job. Okay, so the whole online working online thing is a myth. It's not happening. If you think you're gonna come here and make it happen, you're putting your life at risk. So don't bank on that shit if you're coming here to Saipan. It's not gonna happen. 
in the future the the US may evolve into something like that but right now it's the whole working online thing is in its infancy and you got to be a you got to be a cubicle ninja to to work on the work online thing <laughs> I, I researched it I know what it takes you got to be a cubicle ninja and those who are a cubicle ninja know exactly what I'm talking about uh, yeah so unless you've already got some kind of steady income coming in whether it be retirement whether it be if you're a youtuber who's banging it out and you've got over three four thousand views I mean three three or four thousand subscribers and you got a steady base that you can work with yeah you can come Saipan you can you can nail it I know a cybersecurity firm that come here and rented an entire office building this place is hot for for computer related uh, stuff so if you're a business and your whole business is computer based what you have working to your advantage here is real estate the real estate here is dirt cheap it's like Mexico only it's the US so you can come here as a computer company if your entire business is computer based you can come here as a computer company rent out, rent out a bunch of office space for like an eighth of what you were paying in the US and save a ton of money and if you can move all your people here there's not that much talent here and you're not gonna find that many computer people here but if you can move your talent here or if you have a way to develop your business so that you can sustain it here the real estate is dirt cheap and the internet I I pay for I think it's 52 megabits per second but I'm only getting about 26 so and that's a DSL and that's about as good as it gets the ITE I've heard it's not quite as good as you get about maybe 17 megabits per second with ITE but and that's at an average and I can't guarantee any any particular rate bit rate but that's from my experience that's what it, that's what it is it's about that so you can figure on on about that go with that go with those numbers uh, some days I might get a little bit more than 26 megabits per second but like I say I'm paying for 52 I'm only getting 26 so and I can't argue with them about it because to try to argue with these guys about this stuff it's it's you're wasting your time <clears throat> but like I said I do know a cybersecurity company that moved here and they moved here with about mm, 10 15 people open up an office building and they're banging it out over here so if you have something like that or if you have a good solid YouTube channel yeah you can kill it over here and this is paradise man you already got a solid income even if you're a retiree if you're getting a thousand fifteen hundred a month you're living in you're living in paradise man really if you got more than that <laughs> you can literally get yourself a house and you can be living you can be living well the only thing that I miss like I say is like my Dos Equis Amber it's like rare to find uh, but if you're an American you come here and you're expecting I mean if you're a retiree let's put it in that perspective if you're a retiree you have everything you need here you can get any kind of food you need I can even get tortillas uh, fresh fresh made tortillas they're shipped in from California but I can get them at I know two grocery stores to go to that I can get tortillas there's probably a half a dozen more but that's just one example you can't get what you need you just have to look around for it uh, but my perception of Saipan after I've been here for five months is uh, I love this place more than I th ever thought I would when I came here I thought I, I had certain expectations about this pa place this place has completely blown me away on my expectations it's it's better than everything I've ever expected it to be so uh, if you're coming here 
wanting to raise a family here, number one, man. This place is the best place in in the world, I think, for raising a family. Except in, if you could live in Thailand, Thailand's better, but this place is not bad, man. I mean, for, for a U.S. citizen, this is about as good as it can get, in my opinion. And I spent a lot of time researching it. Uh, if you, if you want to start a business here, there's a lot of businesses that Saipan needs here, like, uh, uh, like, I don't see that, there are a couple of auto repair and paint, auto, auto body places, but they're like, <clears throat> if you, if you know how to do auto body or auto paint, I think you probably do okay. Uh, that's just one example. Uh, but if you research a little bit, you can pretty much pick out what there is that you can you can do a good business here with. This place is a little bit, I don't wanna say primitive, but it's, it's like a really, really small town in the United States. <laughs> That's what this place is like. But aside from that, it's just, it's paradise, man. Okay, they're talking about the Great Reset. Let me just, get a little bit off topic but it's still on topic we're ter they're talking about the great reset and the possibility of an economic crash okay let's take that perspective uh, if there is an ep economic crash and all the grocery stores run out of food uh, the only thing that you need here to survive is a spear gun a set of fins a snorkel on a mask and you can literally go on the other side of the reef and spear fish. You got food. You can walk through the middle of the fucking jungle and you can see all kinds of wild fruit. Papayas. Uh, uh, I haven't seen any mangoes since I've been here, which is really odd. But coconuts, you can you could literally l drink coconut juice. But they do have fresh water here too. They're, they got a lake, a freshwater lake that's not too far from. I might need to do a video about that freshwater lake because I haven't done that yet. But yeah, there's a lot of, the people who are living here now, if in, there's an economic crash, they'll survive because uh, of its location, of, of Saipan's location. Uh, if the United States economy, for example, was to crash and the United States was to completely go down, uh, they could still deal with other countries. Uh, China's been dealing trade with Philippines and other countries since the age of the Vikings. So <laughs> I think China will always be able to trade with Saipan. And Philippines, Philippines is always able to import stuff to Saipan. Thailand's always able to import. As long as somebody's got a boat and you got farmers to make the stuff, we can we can work with that, you know? And this island sustained itself for many, many years just off fishermen. So if there's an economic crash, you'll survive here. And that's one of the reasons that you should think about moving here if you have the means. But you're gonna have to have a, a way to survive. You're gonna have to have a job or you're gonna have to have, if you're a retiree, you're gonna have to have some income from the government. But that's not always guaranteed. If the United States economy crashes, it's not always guaranteed. And you have to take that risk. But, yeah. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about the difference between Guam and Saipan, because that's another thing that people were talking about in my comments. Uh, Guam is really nice. All you guys in Guam, you think I don't know you're watching, I know you're watching. Yo, Guam, what's up? I see my Google Analytics and I know you're watching. Uh, and you guys on Guam who know me, you know I love Guam. Uh, yeah, I, I do love Guam, but the reason why I decided to come to Saipan instead of Guam was uh, Saipan is way, way more Asian. and. I 
I love Asians. Anybody who knows me knows I love Asians. I married a bunch of them, so. Uh, when everything got crazy in the U.S., uh, I, I lived on Guam, so I know what Guam's like. And I wanted a place that I felt uh, more safe. I think that's what, what I was looking for. More safe and peaceful. And I, I wanted nice beaches. And that's what Saipan's got that Guam don't have. Guam's got beaches, but Saipan's got better beaches. Saipan is, like I said, way more Asian. Way, way, way more Asian. Uh, uh, there's not as much crime and violence on Saipan as there is on Guam. Guam is like, almost like a big city. It's like, uh, I mean, as far as the crime and violence. The, the, the cops on Guam deal with a lot of the same kind of stuff that goes on in a big city. I mean, it's insane. One time I was walking down the street in Guam and I literally saw a couple of truckies that were fighting each other with bolo knives. Where in the world do you see that? <laughs> it doesn't happen here on, Guam, on Saipan. That, it's, that kind of stuff don't happen. And as far as I know, it don't happen. Uh, so that's kind of the difference between Saipan and Guam. Saipan is really mellow, really, really mellow. Uh, I haven't met any, any violent locals yet. Everybody's been very, very cool. And in Guam, when I was in Guam, it's like I met a lot of violent locals. <laughs> there was a time when I was in Guam back in 86 where they had a problem with people driving down the road and jumping out of the car and just beating people up just for the fun of it. And that kind of thing happened all the time in Guam. Uh, that kind of thing doesn't happen over here. I heard that a long time ago it used to happen, but it doesn't happen that much. Uh, so that's kind of the differences between Saipan and Guam. Uh, I see a lot more people. In Guam, I've seen a lot of people who were uh, affectionate or related to the YoMTV gangsta movement. That's kind of like California style. In, in some ways, I think there's a lot of people in Guam who wish it, they were in California. <laughs> that's, that's the way Guam is. They like the YoMTV gangsta style. They're playing YoMTV gangsta in the bars. Uh, Saipan, not so much. You have a strong Filipino community here in Saipan. So most of the music you hear people listening to is what Filipinos listen to. Um, mellow, love songs, that kind of stuff. You don't hear any of this Yo! MTV gangsta stuff. There's maybe about maybe 10% of the islands. I would say that's just a guess, but I'm, from what I hear from cars going by and I hear the music in the cars and stuff like that, I would say about 10% of the island might be into a little Yo! MTV gangsta music. But the rest of it, you're talking 90%? No. You have some that are into like this country island style stuff? A lot. Uh, and then, but the Filipinos, they mostly listen to love songs and this kind of stuff, which is one of the things I like about Filipinos. They're generally mellow in their, their tastes. Uh, and you have, you have Japanese, you have Koreans, you have Chinese, uh, and there's a lot more of them here than there are in Guam, which I really, really like, because I like, I like their style. I like, I like the way they live. They're intelligent. Uh, I can deal with that. I can't deal with truckies fighting with bolo knives down the street, you know? I, I, I don't need that. <laughs> that's why I came to Saipan. So that's kind of the differences between Saipan and Guam. But Saipan is a little bit more uptown you get down into Mooning Bay, uh, it's a little bit more city-ish. Uh, I don't know any place in Saipan that's like Tamuning, Tamuning Bay. You can go down to Tamuning Bay on a Saturday night. There's a lot of action happening. Garapan is pretty quiet. There's like a little corner of Garapan that's got some action. But you've got maybe, 
I don't know, maybe 10, 20 more. No, it's got to be more than that. Maybe uh, at least 20, at least 20 massage parlors here on Saipan. There are probably more because you got Korean massage parlors, you got Thai massage parlors, you got Chinese massage parlors. They're all over the place. Uh, so there's a lot of action happening here too, but most of the disco clubs and dance clubs, there's only like two or three of them that are open now. In Guam, I think you might have a few more than that. Guam has a, a farmer's market that's almost traditional, and it rocks. That's one thing I miss. Guam has a really rocking farmer's market, and now they've made it into a night market which it's unbeatable. I mean, that's one of the things I miss about Guam that Saipan doesn't have. Saipan tried to have that, but it kind of just dwindled out and now nobody even goes there. They don't even have it anymore. But they tried to do it here on Saipan, but it didn't, they didn't keep it up. They don't have the determination to do things like that like they do in Guam. In Guam, they have a lot more determination to continue to do things like the, the night market or the night farmer's market. Yeah, so that's one of the things I miss. But they still have a Saturday market here in Saipan. But after five months of living here, I, I'm really glad I made the decision to come here. I, I, I know what Guam's like. I, I love Guam. I'll probably go back there. and I'm definitely going to do some videos in Guam in the future. But... For now, I'm, I'm really glad I picked Saipan because it's everything that I expected and more. I just wish that you could get some more Dos Equis Amber and then I'd be set. <laughs> okay, I've been sitting in the shade most of the day, but I didn't want to deprive you guys of the view because this really is the most awesome beach in all of Susupe or all of Saipan. This is it, man. It don't get any better than this. See, right down there is Surf Club. Uh, if you live here, you know about Surf Club. If you don't know about Surf Club, that's it, man. That's, that's where it's at. Yeah, right here. This this is my favorite place in the whole island. Seriously. I mean, I'm going to move down here. I just, it's just going to take me a little bit of organization and uh this is this is where I'm going to live. This is this is it, man. There's no better place in the whole island than this. I need to live here. So I'm gonna make it happen. I just wanted you guys to check it out. The thing that's cool about this place is not only is the beach awesome, and it's totally awesome. Look at this. Look at look, look, coconut trees everywhere, man. Look at this. But you also have, when you get in the water, there's no weeds. When I'm up in Garapan, there's weeds everywhere, man. This place is the ultimate. Look at how many people are in the water. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. That tells you everything you need to know right now about this place. This place is totally awesome. I guess I'm just thankful that no monstrous hotels have come here and taken over the property because this is a park area here and I'm really glad that Saipan government reserve this area for for everybody because that's so cool that's just so cool man because this is the best place on the whole island I really love being here every time I come down here I never want to leave man and you don't have any fucking boats like you got over there and fucking got up on <laughs> This area here is free of boats. So you can actually get a decent sunset here. Okay, I gotta pedal my ass back up to the Garapan. <laughs> <laughs>